From NYC to the world, this is Battle of the Blade. The first ever barbershop competition slash reality show. That's right, reality show. With a grand prize total of 10 bands. Listen, Harlem, New York. I don't know if you're ready. Not ready, you're about to get ready. Because it's about to go down. Hey, 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 hey. See that didn't take much. I'm clipping straight hitting. Put the scissors through your do rag and got your waves dripping. Got him acting like a new man, but it's the same difference. I keep my pleasures and my business separate. Line it up and we can run a fade until it hit the edges. Your bitch will be a widow's peaking when you least expect it. Peace connected. We can use the clippers for a lethal weapon. You can get your section eight when you don't see progression. Some people just couldn't stomach when they see the section. Barbers and hustlers reconnected with alcohol and baby powder. Like we the legends. Take a seat, I teach a lesson. Show you how it all started. One clip of one brush. One garden back when I was small time in Brooklyn, Bronx, Queens, Manhattan. Last but never least, it's the island of Staten. And my see what's good. Matter of fact, what's cracking? Battle of the Blaze Assassins in action. <laughs> Brooklyn, Bronx, Queens, Manhattan. Last but never least, it's the island of Staten. And my see what's good. Matter of fact, what's cracking? Battle of the Blaze Assassins in action. <laughs> So for the second part of the show, we have Harlem in the building. We'll get to them later. But for now, let's get the show started. This is the Battle of the Blades. Your girl, Carolyn Lopez. We out here in the Bronx. We home, you already know. We over here in the Hall of Fame barbershop. Let's see what they really got. Let's see if their blades are really supreme. Eric, ¿qué lo que? Dime. ¿Qué lo que, mi amor? ¿Cómo te estás? Bien. Buenas tardes. ¿Y tú? Muy bien, muy bien. Bueno, yo escuchado, you know, that this is that you're the best barber in the BX. Yeah, but nah, we were the best barber on NYC. Oh, okay, yeah. okay, I'm okay. I'm okay. only going back to the Hall of Fame Barber Show. Oh, oh, really? This is what we do in Ashley's Corner. We pop bottles and we get money. Dominican power, you Dominican already know. Power. You have 15 minutes to reconstruct, bring back, and make fresh again the hairline, AKA the lineup, using the seven point judging system. Come check your girl, Ashley's Corner, 776 Morris Park, Bronx, New York. When I win the money, I'm gonna donate it all to myself. <laughs> all the etiquette, the cleanliness, how you handle yourself, hope, carry yourself as a barber, all of that matters for us as well. You know, you're not just in here being a renegade rebel running around the barber, doing barbershop, doing whatever you want. Don't work like that. Are you ready? Yes. yes. Judges, are you ready? Let's get this work. Okay, now ready, set, clip. The clip is he sparking them up today looking like I'm cutting my old baba off. He gone. Looking for the battle of the blades. The battle of the blades. I know I'm in Brooklyn because I can smell the cheesecake, the dollar bands, and the shmoney. Brooklyn, come on, talk to me. Where you at? Help me. Help me. Help me, please. Battle of the blades. Help me. I'm getting close to it. I can tell. I can smell it. So, Ashley, question. Being a female barber, do you feel extra pressure cutting hair? No pressure. No? Okay. No pressure at no all. No pressure at all? You want to show these men what you do? Exactly. Heard you. Things that I've gone through as being a fucking female barber is crazy. I'm cutting your hair. She's, she's standing there with the necklace on her like. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, geez. bitch, really? No, yeah, because we're going to do it right now. Right in the chair. Right now. I got more rules in regards to barbers, man. Why I don't rock with certain barbers. Disclaimer, this ain't a shout out to my man E. This is the reason why I'm at E. 
These are the reasons why I'm at E. If you see the barbers do these things, yo, break for the hills immediately. All right? You know we just came, came out of COVID. Please tell me, how do you feel about getting the vaccine? Me personally, I'm against the, the vaccine. Okay. I don't feel like they know enough about it. I'm done with doing experimental drugs when I was younger. Talk about so, it. So, you know. Experimental drugs. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing cool it. You hear me? I need, I need to know what I'm putting in my body. Okay, so. okay. So what about you, Eric? How do you feel about the vaccine? I get it. Go ahead and get it. Yo, another, hold on. Yo, another reason why you may want to cut your barber, in this era of COVID variants, I don't even know what we up to, Omega. Yo, whatever we up to, some people say it's the Omarion. It's crazy. But whatever variant is out here, yo, barbers, man. Yo, do something, man. Invest in a temperature checker, man. You know what I'm saying? Uh, alcohol, sanitizer, man. Mask, homeboy. I'm trying to get a cut. But I'm not trying to die, man. Stay safe, man. I'm scared to turn green, you know. I'm yeah, I was gonna be about, the zombie apocalypse. I'm about being part of World War Z. I ain't, I ain't trying to do it, man. I, I'm not, not now. I gotta okay. see the way they've treated us, brown and black people in the past. You know, I'm it, not really with it. It was just crazy. Yeah, yeah. But I ain't you know, saying officially no. Uh -huh. But I, I need more information. So everybody has this, you know, this self-importance, you know, like they come in, they need to be seated right away. You're walking. We work by appointment. So if you haven't made an appointment, you're going to have to wait. Sorry about that. I'm next. 150 plus your service. Since you got it like that, since you don't got to respect my time. Hey, like you wait, baby. <laughs> so barbers, you have 10 more minutes. 10 more minutes. Y'all looking good so far. Fresh cut with the nice garments, I'm on it. Barbershop talking about how I want it. Real talk, that's that New York shit. Sit in the chair next with no one. Hey, like you wait, baby. You either anointed or disappointed. It's funny how a fresh cut will make them feel important. Y'all looking good so far. Yeah, that's getting real. real. Time's winding <laughs> down. <laughs> oh, me, no, me, no. Let's get Wait, serious. No, I'm in Brooklyn because all I can hear is a dice game and guns loaded. I'm looking for Battle of the Blades. Somebody. Oh, this, this, this definitely sound like it's it. This gotta be it. Another client we gotta talk about is the micromanager. Like for some people, for some reason, these people who have these these jobs with authority, they come to they come here, they come to the salon, and they wanna like sling authority around and micromanage every little minutia of this of the process. Listen, all my male clients, they rather me cut their hair. Why? Because do you want a stink ass burly man <laughs> on <laughs> cutting you? You know what I'm saying? So being a female barber, when I tell you how this perks, it definitely does because one, we know how to do hair. Two, we love to make a man look good. Three, we're gonna keep it honest. So, being a female barber, like I said, has its perks. And, you know, we have a feminine touch, which actually helps out a lot when a man comes in to get his hair cut and he's stressed. So, come check us out. All female barbers. You hear me? Period, poo. So, what do you like most about cutting hair? Is it the money? Is it the passion? What drives you? Well, I can say, like, both. Because, uh, like... The money bring the passion, and the the passion bring the money. It's like a, a, compliment, a compliment of both of them. I like that. I like that answer. That's a good answer. This is where it all started. My mom was a single mother. She, for the first time in her life, she had to work. Um, and 535, 15th floor, 5D. A lot of fights, a lot of hate, a lot of love. I have my best friends, real best friends. Let's be clear, when the whole COVID thing was happening, they wouldn't, you, it was hard to get tested within our own community. Now they want to use our community to test the people. Nah, you can sit down. Cut, get rid of your barber. Yo, you sit in a chair, you ready to get your cut, and then your barber, without a spoiler alert warning, 
begins to break down every aspect of the show that you was about to watch with wifey, your girlfriend, whatever. I mean, yo, from the opening credits to the ending credits, he done told you the whole movie, and you can't tell him to chill because he wants you to keep your mouth still because he cutting your mustache. So I can't tell him, yo, son, stop! Because then my whole mustache is wrecked. Yo, stop spoiling flicks, yo. Let me calm down, man. Damn! All right, so we have five more minutes, guys. Five more minutes. Let's tighten this up. Oh, y'all gonna start the production without me. Y'all know I went to the store to get a little drink and then smoke on that ah, 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 ah. <laughs> oh, oh, these judges. Where's your roll? <laughs> Out today. I hope those blades are getting too sharp. Amado, your son, he lets me know that Denny Mo used to cut his hair. How funny is that? <laughs> Shout out Denny Mo, I'm out here stealing your clients. <laughs> Why? Because my razor is Ginsu, Come like on. the judges said. I came for that morning, mucho dinero to my pocket. What do you want? I want to fade. All right, I'll fade your hair. You know, wind you up, get you ready to go. No, wait. Uh, can you bring the top down? How much? I don't know. Can we uh, bring it down? And if it's not enough, we bring it down some more. And we bring it down some more. We bring it down some more. And then we bring it down some more. And, and you know, like I understand you want to be part of the process and all this, but when you tell us what to do, we can do it from A to Z. Get it done. Let's tell them. But no, you want to stop us when we think we're done? No, we got to go back. Do something that you could have told us to do four steps ago. Now, the whole haircut is just out of whack. Like for us, a haircut is sort of like a dance. We got a routine. It goes from A to Z. In action. The blade sharp, no beginners, cause not everyone can take part. It's a great art, just tell them to stay calm. And this title will go with me to the graveyard. Well, mom is from, um, her background is from Puerto Rico. Dad is from Trinidad. I grew up in the Bronx, West Farms. Um, I'm one of six kids, a uh, single mother household. Um, you know, life had its ups and downs, childhood had its ups and downs. Barbara, you have three more minutes. Three more minutes. So your ex comes into the shop. Mm -hmm. and he wants a haircut. You're the only one available. Would you cut his hair? Yeah, I'm gonna cut his hair. I'm gonna cut his hair and I'm a Zika now. <laughs> <laughs> Ashley's in the building, so all hail the queen. The, the, the haircut we, we did to the people by the, by the relationship between us the barber because we always like we looking for each other and we be there for one another. They don't want to stop looking at the mirror because they scared you're going to do something that they ain't seen before but they done been in your chair a hundred times like why won't you just stop looking at like you can stop looking at the mirror we got you. By then, and like if we messed you up, by then you can't do nothing. If you see it afterwards, <laughs> like what are you gonna do? Just relax, get your head. One minute left in the clock. Yeah, That's come see me. I got a guard door too. Today. Nobody's messing with me. Get that shmoney. Guys, you have 20 seconds left. 20 seconds, let's make it good. I'll jump the super far, but I gotta sweat off another man's forehead. This ain't as glamorous as people be making it out to be. For real, some people gotta get it. That's why I deserve a tip. Cause I wipe sweat off your forehead. Your girlfriend ain't wipe sweat off your forehead that day, nigga. That's my bad. 10 more seconds, guys. You wanna count it down? 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Ashley, 
as it stands, you for me, you got 96 points. I gave you uh, 18 points on accuracy, simply because at the back, on the nape of the neck, you could have um, blended them out a little bit. That would have made the finishing product, the finished product, just a little bit more crisp and polished. Well, of knowledge, you were spot on with the answer, so I gave you the whole 15 points for that as well. Thank you. Right, Eric, for me, out of 100, I gave you a 67. Another Bronx representative. This is hard for me to do. You got the same name I got. This is, you know, mm -hmm. but I got to do it. For your of knowledge, um, the answer was incorrect, so I gave you zero points <laughs> for it. Yeah, your thing, uh, I got you out of 85. That was great, guys, but it's time to announce who the winner is. Our final decision is, Ashley, you're moving on to the next <laughs> round. <laughs> Eric, thank you so much. Really, really appreciate having you here. It's a pleasure. Let the people know where they can find you, what you have coming next. Uh, hello from Marvel Show, uh, 3541, we play role in New York, Bronx, Bronx, New York. I love where I come from. This is this is who what made me. This is why I, I am who I am. But this is not the end. This is just the beginning. The person that you put me up against that was like not on my level, not in my caliber at all. Ooh, at all. And yes, I smoked his boots. <laughs> yes, I did. Not the boots. The boots. All, all your boots. All the way. Now that I got my sight back, I can clearly see you barbers in some shit. <laughs> Get me some bananas, beer, and a baby. I'm just here for the craft services. Make a batch. I'm gonna need some power. <sighs> <laughs> Lines mean everything. You got a real good hair cut, but if you don't put it, put that finishing touch on it the right way, it just don't matter. You know what I mean? So it's like soured milk. You know, it just don't, it just don't rock. So get your lines together. And we're gonna see how this does. We're gonna put everything in perspective. Running the club and we coming from your guy. Pop tag switch clothes like it ain't nothing. It's a Harlem bakery thing, baby. Check out the fits. Period, pool. <laughs> Harlem, baby. Hey guys, and welcome back to our show. Now it's time for the second part. We have Harlem in the building. Yes, 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 I'm your host, Koala. I'm still here. So to the left of me, we have Kenny Warren, AKA the average black man from Levels Harlem. Trailblazing for Harlem. Trailblazing for Harlem. Oh, yeah. They are ready, they are ready. And to the right, we have Denny Moles from Denny Moles Superstar Barbershop. The they world's most celebrated barbershop. Ooh, love. I'm a New Yorker, baby. You know what I'm saying? Straight up and down. You come to Harlem though, Get prepared for a love affair. Now it's time to put your blades to work. This is Battle of the Blades, season one, episode two. So this is round one. You have 15 minutes to reconstruct, make fresh, and bring back the hairline, AKA the lineup, while incorporating the seven point judging system. Barbers, are you ready? Ready. Judges, are you ready? Yeah, I'm oh, okay, ready? Set. Right, let's get it. Clip. He got a great cut. Danny Moe's masterclass is in session. Youngins, take a seat, learn the lesson. Okay. Question, how does it feel to be going against one of your friends here? I'm mean, cool. You know, we've had together before. I'm just gonna wait and see how the judges feel, you know? He's probably win because I'm a color well. I don't know about nothing that compared to that. That's kind of like hitting that three to win the game. A lot of people know this, that you are a comedian, actually, right? Yeah. You're not funny. I'm pretty funny. <laughs> so where can people find you in terms of your comedy? Oh, they can find me at uh, different clubs around Manhattan. I'm actually the uh, curator at the Grizzly Fair downtown in, uh, on 107 at Google Street. So I've um, got shows down there every night, 8 and 10 o'clock. So. Come on through. Come on through. Right? At work, right? Smoke weed stuff. I came back to work the other day. They was watching Jaws 2 in a barbershop. So I sat back in my chair, eyes held, and thought to myself, why haven't they ever done Jaws from the shark's perspective? <laughs> <laughs> Think about that. Jaws pull up on the beach, doodle, doodle, 
Doing all, you see all those feet kicking in the water from the swimmers. He's like, that's Thanksgiving right there. I don't even know where to start. Maybe I'll start with Chinese food. No, no, I'll be home here in 30 minutes. Uh, maybe I'll go with some Italian. Too hairy, I don't want no fur in my throat. Uh, maybe I'll have some soul food. <laughs> Ain't no black people in the water. Now I know that joke was racist as fuck. But the shark was a great white, so that's what happened. Who knows how much it's gonna be? Or ask how much it's gonna be. If you don't have it, let us know at the get-go. Cause how you gonna we did the service and then you only have that much. That ain't right. That ain't right. You looked at him like he was crazy. Said you want all that for like twenty dollars? And clients be looking at us like we not supposed to get raises. Like pizza done went up, coffee done went up, cabs done went up, candy bars and potato chips done went up. But a bar is not supposed to go up. Like inflation misses us. Jenny, what about you? Like, first of all, you have a barbershop, hair salon. What is it? A braiding shop? <laughs> oh yeah, I'm paying attention. I'm only one day mo, you know what I'm saying? I can't open too many shops. Now with my sons, I got both of my sons working with me, so whenever they uh, get a little more seasoned, we'll open up a couple shops for them. But right now, there's only one day mo. Nice. This is pretty exciting now, all the legends in the building. They call me Kenny Warren, AKA the average black man. But ain't nothing average about these cutting skills. You about to learn today. Proper question is, that stands out. Some of the most notable people. Eddie Murphy, uh, Mike Piazza, uh, Joe Frazier, um, Bobby Brown, New Edition, Keith Sweat, uh, and the list goes on, man. Is there a celebrity that you do want to cut? A celebrity what? That you want to cut, that you have to. Oh, absolutely. Jesus. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> you know he had hair wool. So Marvelous, we have 10 more minutes. 10 more minutes. I know my first passion is, you know, cutting them up, man. You know, putting them all together. Make them walk out smiling, happy. You know what I'm saying? But let me introduce you to my second passion. You know what I'm saying? I'm a photographer, uh, photojournalist. You know what I'm saying? This is what I do. In Mikasa Sukasa, this is where barbering meets photography. As you know, it goes hand in hand, you know what I'm saying? So that's why I consider it barbertography. I'm trying to get that queen grand prize. Hat, and last but never least, just the hollering the stack. And then I see what's good, man. Fact is crack. Ooh, Better you need, you need something? Man. Man. Yeah. 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 So when you're in Harlem, you definitely have to check out Lighthouse Fish Market and Restaurant. One of my favorite restaurants in Harlem, OK? All right now. How do y'all feel about that whole tour? Did you make it sound? Give me the shooter. I'm not sure. He, he might have shot him. He might have shot him. Nah. I mean, he shot the club, but he ain't shot him. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, judges, how y'all feel about it? She's gonna need plastic surgery on her feet. I'm <laughs> just <laughs> <laughs> going over her. This is the mecca of just black excellence. So coming here was just everything to me, and I love it. And let me tell you something. If you live in Harlem, you better know how to dress. You hear me? Harlem is the fashion capital of New York City. True. Gap who? Nike what? No, nah, we don't do that. We do bakery, baby. So let me introduce you to the owner, founder of the bakery, the designer, the fresh purveyor of it all. Oh, oh, oh. Ooh, did you see what I did there? <laughs> Tio to Don. Tio, hi. How you doing? I'm all right. See this? You see this, y'all? Yeah, just just random, just just light. Tell you something about this guy. I would say my earliest influence was just art. <laughs> we're, we're artists, man. You know, and you know, art 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 goes to every level. You know, therapist too. Therapist too. That is. A fun. Oh yeah. People don't like when I say that because they like think I'm playing with. I don't like, know why. With, with with people's you know mental playing with them, but I'm not. I'm saying. Sometimes, you know, just being able to go to work and talk, talk some stuff out with your, your, your co-workers. Five more minutes, guys. Five more minutes. Five minutes? 
I'm a whole time man. Y'all got to so much extra time on this, man. I'm a whole time. The hardest thing about growing up in Portland is it's 2% black. So you you got to find your, your people. It's, they just not next door to you. You got to go find them. Picked up these clippers, man. It was like store picking up a hammer. You know what I'm saying? And I really don't know what he felt like, but I know what I felt like when I picked these clippers up for the first time. So one thing I learned by living in Harlem, I'm a barber, I'm a master barber as well. Um, being a master barber and a female in an all black barbershop is one hell of an experience. We had one guy who walked in, took his, this white guy to be honest, he took his hat off and his hair looked like the Dalmatian patches. First of all, if you know anything about being black, you know we like to crack jokes. If you know anything about being black and in a barbershop, you know you're going to get flamed. We laughed. This man was like, oh, I trusted him. He said he know how to cut hair. So I sat him in my chair, got him together, and he thanked me. And that was one of the moments when I fell in love with being a barber. Man, that was the number one barbershop in New York City. We got nice barbers from all over the place, man. Been doing it for a while. Everybody experienced. Got all kind of skills with the blades and all of that. So, yeah. And we, and, we, and we finish that cut. You know, we leave that polish on there. It's called blendation. This right here, and this right here, this is the art before the cut. That's a D. We're here with Battle of the Blades in NYC. And um, a barber named Fabian out of Brooklyn on Instagram, your mobile barber. He said the, uh, the thing that annoys him about clients the most is when a client wants to be a monitor. They wanna check their they haircut as they are getting it. They wanna look at every move you make and look check everything in the mirror. They wanna assist you by moving their head where you didn't ask them to move it and they're all over the place. Like you won't sit still and you think you know what the barber wants but he just wants, your, he just wants you to sit still. That's what he really wants. In my shop, I cut all the barbers. Yeah, I'm the, I'm the barber's barber. I don't cut none of the barbers. So who cut your hair? My son. Nice. Who cut your hair? Me. Nice. Ain't got time for that. Alright, you cut your hair. <laughs> yeah. he, he don't have to take that. In the back of the room, there's another barber. You gotta, you gotta have two mirrors. That's all you need is two mirrors. There's other barbers in this shop. He don't have to take that abuse. Two mirrors and you good money. Even though we wash your hair, we need you to wash your hair in between the time from the first time we did it to this time. You gotta wash your hair somewhere in between there, okay? Cause when you come to the bowl and it's brown upon brown upon brown while we're washing out, we gotta wash it like, you know, seven, use a whole bottle of, um, of shampoo. That's no good. It's no good for you. Doesn't your hair itch? You gotta wash that. Wash that in between the time. One minute left in the clock. A lot of people don't know. Most customers trust you more than they trust their doctors, you know? That's true. Because you have a, you have a, a different type of rapport with them, you know? What I love most about cutting hair, man, is just, you know, making people's days, you know? It's like, it's giving a service, they paying for it, but when you make their hair look better than what they thought, you got a customer forever. Ain't nothing like client retention, you know what I mean? I've had a lot of barbers. A lot. Mm -hmm. And when I leave here, I'm satisfied, man. The scissors through your do-rag and got your waves dripping. 20 seconds left. I tell people all the time, you might be the only Bible a child ever needs. You know what I'm saying? So you gotta be 100% with yourself and with everything around you. The best religion in the world is to do unto others as you would have them do unto you. There's two major differences in people from Portland and people from Harlem. People from Harlem stay fresh every week. They coming to see you, they need to get their hair cut, so you gotta have your braids ready. People in Portland, they might get a shape up and then get a haircut the next week. They not really trying to stay that fresh. We got 10 more seconds, guys. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, Clippers out. Judges, I do not want to be you. <laughs> I would like to thank both barbers. Please give it up for yourself. You did an amazing job, both professionally and with style. Unfortunately, you know the rule. I mean, one will move forward to the next round. So, before we close out, there's one more part. Test your barber knowledge. Judges? What 
were we called before we were called barbers? Kenny, you go first. Jenny, what's your answer? Barber surgeon. We had to judge y'all on the seven point system. Like our host said, we could only have one. For me, um, this was one of the tightest races out of all the competitions so far, out of all the people, contestants that's participated, y'all are neck and neck. And the only thing that separated y'all is the barber knowledge question. Kenny and Denny, uh, as, as far as accuracy, you both got 20 points. Uh, barbershop etiquette, you both got 10 points. That's the maximum. The only thing that separated you, like my cohort said, was the knowledge question. And um, Denny, you got 15. Kenny, you got 10. Uh, for your answer, you said uh, bloodletting. That's what we used, That's what we did, not what we would call. Okay. Drum roll, please. And our final decision is Denny Mo. You you win this round, baby. You did you did your thing for Harlem. Bubble up, bubble up. Like that's right. Tell them your social media so they can. Follow oh, you can follow me at Instagram um, underscore the average black man. So you'll be moving on with us to the next round. Clip but please. before you do that, can you tell us where they can find you at and what you got going on? Oh man, you can find me at Denny Mo Superstar Barbershop, 2496 Frederick Douglass Boulevard, the world's most celebrated barbershop. You can uh, catch me on Instagram at Denny Moles, at Denny Mo, and at Denny Moles Media House. Wow. And you know what you forgot to say? What? You are the above average. Oh yeah. Let's get into it. What did she say? Oh yeah, I'm Kenny Moore, the above average black man. I used to be the average black man before the pandemic, mm. but I lived. So I just threw that above on top of there like that. Talk to me nice! We are here at Denny Moe's, world's most celebrated barbershop. This is episode two of Battle of the Blades, NYC. Harlem, we out of here. Brooklyn, Bronx, Queens, Manhattan, last but never least, it's the island of Staten, and I see what's good, matter of fact, what's cracking, battle of the blaze assassins, in action, Brooklyn, Bronx, Queens, Manhattan, last but never least, it's the island of Staten, and I see what's good, matter of fact, what's cracking, battle of the blaze assassins, in action. The blade sharp, no beginners, so not everyone can take part. It's a great art, just tell them to stay calm. And this title will go with me to the graveyard. I'm iconic, fresh cut with the nice garments, I'm on it.